What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Stochastic Fantasy Football Channel. And today we are here to talk some more stacks. This time we are going to be talking inflated stacks ahead of the 2023 season. Before we get started, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And we are brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, as you can see on the screen. They have a phenomenal offer for you guys where you can get a first match deposit bonus up to $100 when you use the promo code STOCHASTIC. This is a no-brainer. This is an offer that literally doubles your money upon deposit. They're giving you free $100 that you can use to enter a lot of these best ball tournaments. You can take advantage of this again with that promo or click the link in the video description below. If you're concerned with your play, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. And it's not just best ball that this site has to offer. They have pick contests for those of you in non-legal betting states. They have daily fantasy contests which with large field GPPs. They have, of course, the fantasy best ball stuff. They have Best Ball Mania 3. That is a tournament with millions of dollars up top. Plenty of ways to take advantage of this. And with the free money they're giving away, you got to actually take advantage of this ASAP. All right. We're going to get into some inflated stacks, some overrated stacks from a best ball perspective, looking at underdogs rankings specifically. And we're going to kick things off with Denver. So the Denver Broncos, they come into this with some relatively high ADPs in some spots. It's pretty even across the board. This starts with Russell Wilson at 132.6. So Russell Wilson coming off the down year, our rankings actually have him at 160. The team hired a new coach and this offensive environment should probably benefit Russell Wilson. Of course, you've got Sean Payton coming in at head coach, Joe Lombardi as offensive coordinator. Payton last coached with the Saints in 2021. And while people widely view this as an upgrade, I'm not necessarily necessarily sure it is from a fantasy perspective a best ball perspective if you remember Sean Payton was really pass heavy with the Saints when he had Drew Brees but when Drew Brees retired this team completely morphed into a run heavy team the by the end of it they were 30th in pass rate I mean this team was slow I'm not sure we're going to see the up-tempo Sean Payton that we've seen in previous years and when we look at their B reporters see Salami's covered the team for a while now he believes this team is going to be run heavy, which I tend to agree with. Now, from there, we still have the pass catchers to evaluate. Jerry Judy pick 40.4, Cortland Sutton 93.3, and Marvin is the presumed wide receiver three right now at 163.9. Those are their ADPs on underdog fantasy. Judy's actually pretty fairly priced according to our projections. We have him at 37. This ebbs and flows a little bit depending on some of the players around him. So I think Judy's probably going to be a player we're in line with through most of the year. From there, Sutton is coming off the board at a cheap enough price where I'm willing to take shots. I mean, 93.3, we're talking about an eighth, ninth round pick in some spots for Cortland Sutton. And yeah, he hasn't been efficient. You look at his yards per route run, comes in at 1.55 last year. That's well behind Judy, who was at 2.18. Again, he did have the injury, so perhaps he gains his previous form. I'm not sure if I'm buying it. And then down at the bottom is where I think you can really take some stands. People in the fantasy industry are just automatically presuming Marvin Mims wins this job for wide receiver three. And I love Marvin Mims. Really productive downfield threat coming out of Oklahoma. But this team still has Tim Patrick. He's coming back from injury. His ADP is 202.8. We have him at 199, so pretty in line there. They even have KJ Hamler, a slot guy who's dealt with injuries himself, but Previously had some high draft capital. I'm not necessarily sure that Marvin Mims locks down the shop. Then at tight end, we have Greg Dulcich, and he comes off the board at 136.7. He's my least favorite option in this Denver pass game, and it's not close. We have him at, we have him at 154. He's going ahead of players like Dalton Schultz, Tyler Higby, Irv Smith, and that's basically players that either have a better role or their offense is way better than Denver's. Denver also was Adam Troutman, Chris Manhurts, Albert Akwe Budum still on the roster. And a lot of beat reporters don't really think that Dolchich is going to play in every down role. Earlier this offseason, Sean Payton said that Dolchich was going to play the Joker position, which, according to the beat reporters, it's basically this hybrid role that could be a running back or a tight end in Sean Payton's offense. 
And Dolchich isn't going to be the only player tasked with doing that. And then even if he's on the field, he's still going to be behind guys like Judy and Sutton. And maybe if Marvin Mims emerges, he could be fourth in terms of pass catching. And that's not even considering the running backs. So with Dolchich coming ahead of Dalton Schultz and some of these other tight ends, it's pretty absurd here. As far as the overall stack goes, we're going to be down on Russell Wilson throughout the year with Sutton and Judy being pretty solid players at their ADPs. I'm willing to take one-offs here. The playoff schedule for Denver is not bad. They get the Chargers in week 17. That game's at home. Play Detroit in week 15. So it's pretty favorable. I'll take some one-offs of Judy and I'll take some one-offs of Sutton. But other than that, we're going to be out on this Denver passing game with their inflated ADPs in what projects to be a run heavy offense. Before we move on, want to talk to you about our best ball package. It is premium package right now for $39.95. Basically what this gets you is our rankings for underdog fantasy, DraftKings, drafters, all the analysis you're hearing on this video. There will be articles and other sorts of projections available to you guys so you can take advantage of. The link should be in the description for that, so make sure to check out the best ball package. Getting to our next stack, we have the Saints. This one's going to be overrated for a couple of reasons here. Main difference is you do have one elite pass catcher in Chris Olave. He comes off the board at 19, and the rest of this group is pretty cheap. But starting with Derek Carr, 146.2, we currently have Derek Carr a little bit behind that in our rankings. He comes off the board, again, in that 140-ish position. It's basically like a 12th round pick to 14th round pick, depending on your draft. We have him at 184. His efficiency was not great last year, completed 61% of his passes for seven yards per attempt. Completion percentage was down from his career average. Yards per attempt was pretty consistent, but his touchdown rate was actually higher than his career average by about a half a percent. I don't necessarily know that he's entering a better situation here. Last year, he played with Devontae Adams, Renfro, Waller. He's now moving to Chris Olave, who's great, but who else? Michael Thomas, Rashid Shahid, some combination of Juwan, and Taysom Hill at tight end, Juwan Johnson, that is. At best, I think this is a lateral move. So right away, we're looking at a pocket passer with middling efficiency in an offense that's been slow and run heavy. I don't know. As far as the pass catchers, it's kind of similar to Jerry Judy here with Chris Olave. He's a stud. He should be targeted at his ADP. We're right in line with that. He posted a 2.42 yards per route run as a rookie, just an all-out stud here. Where it gets concerning is when we get beyond him. Now, Michael Thomas coming off the board, 19, or excuse me, 92.8 ADP. That's not really that high. We're talking an eighth round, ninth round pick in most drafts. But as far as it relates to this stack and stacking him with Derek Carr, there's a ton of risk here. You already talked about, we already talked about the Derek Carr efficiency woes. But Michael Thomas hasn't played football in the better part of three years. He's now 30 years old. So not only do you have the injury risk, which he seemingly presents every year, but you have the age risk. At what point does he start declining due to that age? He's a player I'm willing to take when he slides past ADP. And in some drafts, he certainly does. I've gotten him outside the top 100 picks just because I think a lot of people have the same concerns as me. But as far as it relates to the New Orleans stack, this is an extremely risky stack overall. The last player here, presumed wide receiver three, Rashid Shahid. He's basically free, so he's kind of hard to evaluate in these in these stacks. If Derek Carr falls way beyond ADP, I'll take him, and that's kind of like where I'll add on Shahid at the very end. But we're talking about a guy who played under 300 snaps last year, really productive on them, but had a couple big splash plays. We'll see if that sticks. I'm not even sure he plays that much further ahead of Traquan Smith, who's been well ahead of him at points in his career. Tight ends. Juwan Johnson, 164.9. He's a tough click, in my opinion, just with Taysom Hill going to play so many snaps at the position as well. So ultimately, this stack comes in pretty overrated, in my opinion, with all of the risk everywhere. My treatment of the Saints is just going to be get Chris Olave where I can, try to soak up as many of the elite points as possible, let others draft the other Saints rounds higher than they should go. Getting to our final stack, overrated stack. Let's see here. Whoops, Cowboys, there we go. Went out of order in, in the video for a second here. But this one is one I think requires a little more analysis here. We have Dak Prescott coming off the board at 102.1. Now, Dak Prescott, they have a new coaching staff. A couple reasons why I think this is overrated. 
First of all, you go from Kellen Moore calling plays. This is a guy that's been near the top of plays per game in every season he's been an OC. And the Cowboys moved to some combination of Brian Schottenheimer and Mike McCarthy calling plays himself. Word on the street is McCarthy is going to call them to start the year. We'll see how long that lasts. The Packers, at least towards the end of Mike McCarthy's tenure, were fairly pass heavy, but very slow as well, outside the top 20 in plays per game. The most likely outcome here is a reduced pace and perhaps a consistent pass rate here. That does not help Dak Prescott. You also run the risk of this just being an overall inefficient offense. Last time we saw Mike McCarthy call plays, he basically torpedoed Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams and an elite Green Bay offense on his way to getting fired. So being optimistic for Dak Prescott here in this offense is a little bit difficult for me, especially when he's going ahead of some of the players we've already mentioned, as well as players like Daniel Jones. Sometimes he's going ahead of like Tagovailoa. Not down with that. As far as his pass catchers, still willing to take them kind of as one-offs. CeeDee Lamb, absolute bona fide stud. When we look at his yards per route run, 2.39, he's in the elite category. Michael Gallup was very inefficient last year. 0.96 yards per route run, but he's been pretty vocal about his injury, talking about not being 100%. His ADP is 129.3, so you can get him outside the top 10 rounds. At that price, I'm okay with it. You're just looking for the splash weeks from Gallup, and he's done that in the past. Even Brandon Cooks at 82 comes over from Houston. Yards per route run for him were pretty middling last year, 1.64. He's aging now, but in Dallas, he doesn't have to be the alpha, where he had to do that in Houston. So even at that ADP, I'm fine. What I'm trying to do with these pass catchers is take one of them and not more than one. And this is if they're at a good ADP value. I'm not reaching for, for them, and I'm not trying to take multiple of them. This Dallas offense has quite a bit of concern systemically from the coaching staff, and I'm not sure where the pecking order shakes out between Cooks and Gallup. So when they fall, I'm going to grab one, not both. Tight end, very difficult to target here, even with them coming off the board so cheap. You basically have three big 10 tight ends and Jake Ferguson, Luke Schoonmaker, and Peyton Hendershot. No idea how snaps shake out there. Ultimately, this is going to be a one-off situation for me, not trying to target a lot of this Dallas team. One thing I'll say is their playoff schedule is pretty good. And they're easy to correlate. You've got Buffalo in week 15, Miami 16, and Detroit in 17. That's pretty good. So one-offs, I'd try to stack with one of those guys. Otherwise, this Cowboys stack is one we're looking to be underweight on. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think about these stacks. We'll be back again soon with more best ball content. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe on the way out. And until then, good luck, everyone. We'll see you next time.